Hey everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and welcome to the beginner's guide to setting up a mix in pre-stonus uh, Studio One version three. These videos are intended to help the absolute beginner whether you're coming from another DAW such as Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, et cetera, et cetera, or whether this is the first time you've ever worked in a digital audio workstation, these beginner guide series of videos are intended to help you get up and running very quickly with no fuss and no muss so you can start mixing your next project in PreSonus Studio One version three. So in this video, we're going to do something um, really uh, easy and really kind of uh, customized from, from user to user, and that is we're going to kind of organize our session, color code our tracks, put groupings of tracks and folders, and do our routing of audio to make sure that we have our session set up before we start actually mixing. But before we do that, if you'd be so kind, please hit that subscribe button. Also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and check out all my other training products around recording, mixing, and mastering to help you make better music in your home studio, as well as check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash homerecordingmadeeasy. So let's head on over into Studio One, and as you can see, we're on the start page. And we're gonna go right back to the uh, song that we kind of started a couple of videos goes back. And by the way, if you haven't seen the uh, previous videos around the beginner's guide, go to the YouTube channel and search under the beginner's guide or studio one beginner's guide playlist. And you'll see a whole host of videos around beginner series for PreSonus studio one. So in any event, we're going to go over here to the song uh, tab at the top right hand corner of the page. And we're going to go into our song template. Last video, we went ahead and we imported our audio into our song uh, file here. So we can start now organizing color coding, so on and so forth. So the first thing I like to do once I've imported my tracks here and we have like about 15 tracks here um, and depending on the audio that you're going to be importing into your session they can already be pre-labeled um, and pre-colored in such ways that uh, you may have to do more or less depending on what kind of audio you're going to be importing into your session hope that makes sense so for example this particular session and these wave files that I imported into this session already have some labeling already done so the first thing I like to do is look at my tracks and I like to label them um, and look at the label labeling um, and take a quick listen back to them in solo just to make sure that what they're labeled they actually are so for example in the top uh, left hand corner here we have a kick it looks like so I'll solo up my kick and I just kind of listen to it quickly make sure yes that's a kick I'll uh, whoop, go over to my snare overheads and we got a tom here Another tom mic here. We just kind of back this up and and a third tom here. Even a fourth tom. So we got four toms in this particular session. And that seems right. Bass guitar. Bass guitar. Acoustic guitar. Second acoustic. And then we have some electric guitars here. Let's just double check that. So far, so good. We have a vocal track here. We'll just double check that quickly. Sitting alone with you. And then finally, I some background vocals. Along with you. Okay, so it's that quick just to go ahead and just audition the tracks to make sure that what you've been sent, if you didn't record this session yourself, obviously, um, is actually labeled correctly. A lot of times I get sessions where they're not even labeled this good. They're labeled audio one, audio two, audio three, et cetera, et cetera. And I have to go through each track and figure out what they are. But sometimes people are really kind and they actually pre-label the tracks for me, which is kind of cool. So um, what I like to do is, again, go through, make sure everything is labeled correctly in the R. This uh, has the track numbers before the name of the track. Track, which is totally fine. You can either change that or leave that. Um, to change it, it's real simple. You just come up here and you, um, on, in the edit screen, you just double click and then you can go ahead and you can, uh, you can type right over this if you choose to. And if you hit the tab button, it'll bring you down to the next track. If you hit tab again on your keyboard, it'll walk you down each track, as you can see in the edit screen. And you can label the tracks any way you see fit. You can also do the same thing here down in the console view. If you just click over here in the bottom, uh, left hand corner on the kick track you can just double click hit the delete key and you can label them however you see fit so the first thing I would suggest is go through auditioning your tracks and make sure everything is labeled accordingly so it makes sense the second thing I like to do once that has been done let me just change this okay the next thing I like to do is I like to color code my tracks by groupings of instruments 
And again, you, I urge you to do this and come up, come up with your own color scheme that makes sense to you that you use in every single mix. And the reason for that is a lot of times you'll get lar much larger sessions than this. This only has about 15 tracks in it, but a lot of times you may work with sessions that are 50 tracks, 60 tracks, 100 tracks. And if you color code, color code the tracks by groupings of instruments, then it's very easily uh, found as you're navigating through your mixing session. So for example, I like to color code all my drums in brown. So the way to do that is a couple of different ways. You can come down here to the console view. We can left click on the click tr on the kick track, hold down our shift key, come all the way over to the um, what is it the uh, the last tom track here, and we can uh, click left click, and all of them will be highlighted as you can see. And then I can just go to either one of these tracks, any one of these tracks I just highlighted. I can left click where the name is, and I'm going to get my color palette. And I like to color code mine brown. And when I do one of them brown, because I highlighted them and grouped them all together by holding the shift key, they're all going to turn brown all in the console view, as well as over here in the edit screen. So it makes things easy to find very quickly. So I always know that my drums are always the color brown. It's just like just the way I like to work. Um, my bass guitar next to that, um, I like to always highlight that in like kind of a deep color blue, such as that. Again, it's easy for me to find. Next to that in the console view, we have my two acoustic guitars. Now I like to label all my guitars some shade of green, um, just so I know all my guitars are in green, but the difference between electric and acoustic might be a different shade of green. So I'll go ahead and I will just label, color code that more of a bright green. And then I have my two electric guitars. I'm gonna color code them a different color. Now again, to get more than one track highlighted, so you can change them both at the same time, you just click on the track you want, hold down your shift key, and then left click on the track next to it, and you can see both. Okay, I'll do that again. Both guitars will now be lit up. Shift key, click, and then just left click down in the name, and I'm gonna do this a different shade of green, just to kind of distinguish them. It's a little too close to the acoustic guitars. Maybe even something like a little darker green. And now I have my vocal tracks. I like to make my vocals all in yellow. So again, my lead vocal, I'm gonna make like a bright yellow. And then my background vocals, I might make a different shade of yellow. Just so I know that they're vocal tracks, uh, but in fact, they are um, background vocals as opposed to the lead vocals. So now this way, in my session, I can see all of my tracks laid out in front of me. And once you come up with your own color scheme, you'll find that you can find things on the screen very, very quickly, not only in the console view, but also in the edit screen. The other thing that I like to do once I've color coded everything is I like to um, situate them from left of the console to the right of the console in a very specific way. And there's no rules to this. You can do this however you want. But for example, I like my drums always to be to the far left. So you can see all my drums in brown as we just color coded them. I always will put my bass next to my drums because that's just what I like to do. Then I'll follow that up by any kind of guitars there might be. In this case, there's acoustics and electrics as we talked about a second ago. And then after that, I'll usually put like any keyboards or string sections, which we don't have in this particular session, but something uh, that's a string related instrument or horns maybe. Um, and then I'll always put my vocals last um, in, in line to the right of my audio tracks. Now to the right of my vocal tracks, once I have all my audio tracks lined up the way I want, that's where I like to keep my buses. And we talked about this in the template video a couple of videos back where I created a bunch of buses in my template. And I like to have those um, buses here. Oops. I'm not clicking the shift key, so hold on the left, click shift, there we go. So all my uh, bus tracks here with the blue fader caps, those are always gonna be to the immediate right of my last vocal track. Okay, does that make sense? And then next to my buses, I will typically always have my parallel compression tracks in purple. Okay, which we talked about in a couple of videos earlier. And then to the right of that in the light blue color, I will typically always have my effects, reverbs, delays, choruses, stuff like that over to the far right. And again, I do this in every single mix. So every single mix, when I bring it up and I get it all situated like this, I just know by second nature where everything is and it makes, makes uh, your workflow uh, speed up very, very quickly. Okay, so that's how I organize and clean, clean up the uh, tracks, organize them and lay them out in a way that makes sense to me. And I urge you to have you come up with your own scheme. The last thing I wanna show you for this video, which will make your edit screen um, a lot more uh, easily uh, to navigate. Now this particular session only again, only has 15 tracks and it's not so bad. But a lot of times, as I said earlier, you can get 50 tracks, 60 tracks, 100 tracks. And if you wanna work in the edit screen, you constantly have to be scrolling up and down, trying to find the tracks. 
one way to help clean up that real estate and make it a little bit easier to navigate is to put your groupings of tracks in folders. And that makes it really easy that you only have to open up the folder of the audio tracks that you might be working on. So for example, my drums, I wanna put my drums in a folder. So how do I do that? I come over here to the edit screen, click on the first track, which is the kick drum, hold down my shift T, click on that last drum track in brown, and then I just right click, and if you come all the way second to the bottom, you'll see pack folder. I do pack folder, and now you can see that all of my tracks, all my drum tracks are in the, in the, uh, in the, pa in the uh, folder. And then I can just double click and I can name this drums. So now I know all of my drums, oh, but change colors on me by mistake there. I can just re recolor code those brown. There we go. So I just go ahead and I just put all my drums in a drum folder. So then this way, when I'm not working on the drums, I can just go ahead and I can close that folder and it kind of cleans up the real estate on the edit screen. And believe me, when you have a hundred tracks or so that you're working with, putting things in folders make a lot of sense. So I'll put my drums in one folder. I'll put my guitars maybe in another, my vocals in another. Uh, I'll put my bass usually with my guitars. If I have any percussion, I might put that in a separate folder. If I have any horns or strings, I might put that in its own folder. And again, what that does is it cleans up the edit screen uh, quite nicely uh, so you can go ahead and you can easily find things and just look on the edit screen what you're actually working on at the time so that's how you put things in folders so now the last thing I'm going to show you in this particular uh, video is that once I get all this done and I'm to this point I like to go ahead and there's a couple of things I want to do right off the bat. First thing I want to do is I want to set up my timeline up here to the way I like to see it. Now you can do this when you set up your mix template, but if you're not using a template and you're creating um, a song from a song file from scratch, there's a couple of things I like to do. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my timeline is reading in minutes and seconds. And the default a lot of times is going to be in samples. If you're working on um, a grid and you're working with lots of MIDI, a lot of times you'll see the timeline in samples. I like to work mostly with audio tracks, so I'm going to look in minutes and seconds. So the way I switch that, the way I just changed this, was I bring my cursor up to the timeline, I right click and I go under time base and I can either do seconds, samples, bars and beats if you're working with, uh, with a grid. Um, I can right click again, I can go into frames if you were dealing with video, um, which we're not or it can just go minutes and seconds and that will show me my timeline in minutes and seconds. It's just the way I like to work. The last thing that I wanna do here is I wanna go ahead and I wanna add a start and an end flag or a start and an end marker to my project. And I do that by clicking on this little flag right here. See this little icon? If I click this, you're gonna see a start and you're gonna see an end flag and you can just left click and you can drag this around. Now the reason why it started, it always gonna start at zero, and the reason why it started in this case in two minutes is because when I created the song file, and I'm gonna show you this right now, if I go back to the start page by clicking on the top right hand button up here, and let's say I was creating a new song, and I go create new song like we did a few videos ago, see over here on the right hand side where it says song length, um, that was at two minutes uh, when I created that particular song. I had since changed it back to five minutes, but I cr it was at two minutes as a default. And when it was at when it's at two minutes or whatever you put in this box for the song length is where it's going to put that end flag. Okay, so I'm going to cancel that, go back to my song, and that's why I dropped it here at two minutes because when this song file was created, that song length said two minutes. But have no fear, you can just take this left click and you could just drag it to the end of the song. Now, why is it important that you have a start and an end flag? Well, for me, for really a couple of reasons, especially when you're going to export your file, when you're all done mixing, you're gonna export, and I wanna show you how to do that quickly. You wanna set your start flag or your start marker at the beginning of the song and the end at the end, because when you come up to song up here and you go export mix down, one of the features, and we'll talk about this in a later video, one of the features that you're gonna, uh, you're gonna do here, one of the selections you're going to make is right here where it says export range. And you can choose between a loop, between the song start and end marker, which will export the entire audio, the, the entire song from start to finish, which is typically what you want. But you can also choose things like between each marker, which we'll talk about in another video, or you can do between mark, uh, selected markers, start and end, which would be the same as between start and end marker, or you can drop this down and you can make other selections. Um, in this way, 
because this is a default setting and typically you're always going to export the entire song it's rare that you would maybe just export a chorus or a verse it just makes sense so you don't have to think about it later on this is always going to be between start and end as a default okay so if you have your start and your end flags already set up when you go to export you don't even really need to think about that okay so that is i uh, hope that was helpful on how you start to organize your session get everything color coded get things put into folders and choose kind of a, a an organizational system that works for you again there's no rules you got to kind of experiment kind of come up with a process that works for you and then i urge you to use that process every single time on all your mixes uh, so you will easily and more quickly have a much uh, faster workflow because you'll be able to recognize things on the screen very very quickly and very very easily so until the next next video this has been david with home recording made easy.com for more tips tricks concepts and training around everything home recording be sure to head out to home recording made easy.com please go out to the facebook page as well and like me on facebook and follow me on facebook as well as please hit, please hit that subscribe button if you're watching this on youtube that helps me out greatly and again for more beginner series videos around presonus studio one version three check out the playlist on youtube called uh presonus studio one beginner's guide and it'll have a whole host of videos just like this to help you get up and running in Studio One very quickly. So I will see you next time in the next video. Take care.